Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys enjoyed your week. Welcome to Saturday's video. And today we are looking at a high dividend value ETF that is uh, flying under the radar. Um, it's not getting a lot of love. Um, and I don't know why for sure. Um, expense ratio may be a little high, but it does pay monthly. It pays over a 5% dividend yield. Um, I like the way it's constructed. Um, it's just out of favor now because everybody's getting into growth and tech names right now that's really driving the market. But I'm a value investor at heart and I really um, love these value ETFs or value stocks um, that, are, that have been beat down really. And so that's, to me, that's the time to buy. You know, everybody's rushing into tech. I'm moving into value. And when everybody runs out of tech, I'm going to move into tech. I'm starting to buy a little bit of tech here lately, but not very much. They have to be value. So what are we looking at today? We're just going to get right into it. We are looking at the ticker symbol SPDV and that is the AAM S&P 500 high dividend value ETF. Now, if you haven't heard of it, don't worry because I didn't know of it until a couple days ago. <laughs> but it only has uh, 24 roughly 24 million dollars of assets under management. It does have a 0.29% net expense ratio. A 5% dividend yield that is paid monthly. And we'll look over that uh, when we get over to the Seeking Alpha section. But what I wanted to do is look at the actual index and see how that is uh, constructed or what's, what its attributes are. And again, this is the S&P 500 dividend and free cash flow yield index. My head is probably in the way of that. But it's the S&P 500 Dividend and Free Cash Flow Index is designed to measure the constituents of the S&P 500 that exhibit both high dividend yield and sustainable dividend distribution characteristics while maintaining diversified sector exposure. So what is the index? It is an equal weighted index and has dem... dem it has demonstrated dividend income and value characteristics. The index includes the top five stocks by sector that exhibit the highest dividend and cash flow yields. To determine if a dividend is sustainable, the dividend must the dividend paid must be covered by the cash generated from the company's operating activities and the level of free cash flow is a key measure of a company's financial health. In other words, uh, that must be covered by the cash generated from companies operating activities. So in other words, they cannot borrow, uh, they cannot take debt to pay the dividend. Kind of like how, who, um, Exxon Mobil, I think some, some of the other oil majors have borrowed money to continue to pay their dividend they would not qualify to be in this index. So a high free cash flow means a healthy operating condition and strong balance sheet. A high free cash flow yield indicates that for each unit of stock price, an investor receives more income that is measured by free cash flow. So pretty simple. It is an equal weighted index. Uh, they have to be in the S&P 500. They have to have positive indicated dividend yield and free cash flow. So let's take a look and see what it's about. So if we look at it, SPDV is trading for about $21.79 a share right now. And we'll look at 98% uh, North America, 1.5% in Europe. 53.19% in large cap stocks, 
35.65% in mid cap stocks, 10.81% in small cap stocks. Morningstar rates this as a large cap value fund. So what I thought I'd do, I'm, I'm going to go through a lot of because it only holds about 56 holdings, actually 55. I think uh, the one is cash. So if we look at the sector exposure, it is pretty evenly distributed across all 11 sectors of the S&P 500. So you have industrials at 9.8. I'm not going to go through all of them. They're all fairly equal. They may, you know, vary about 1%. It probably just depends upon, you know, what sectors performing well at the time, but, uh, pretty much, uh, average of 9% across all 11 sectors. And, uh, I like that. I like that. So what I thought would be interesting, I'll, I'll just go through a quite a few of these holdings um, because you're going to see that there's a lot of quality names in here. There's some that are a little iffy that might be in a dying industry, um, but they're all quality uh, established companies that still make money, still pay a good dividend. So let's take a look. This might be hard to see for you guys. Um, I can't really zoom in on this thing. It won't let me. Let me see. No. Oh, well. well. Let's just take a look. We'll break this thing down into sector. And I'll sort it. And it's only got five stocks across all 11 sectors. So in communications, you're looking to have AT&T. Uh, Verizon so those are pretty uh, big names there they also have CenturyLink um, and Fox in consumer discretionary we're looking at Hasbro Toys Genuine Parts Company which is the automotive uh, parts company Home Depot H&R Block Best Buy uh, you know all recognizable names consumer staples altria group general mills kroger philip morris walgreens excuse me energy uh i don't know too many of these i know uh, kinder morgan and chevron like i said uh exxon probably wouldn't uh, qualify to be in here because they borrowed money to pay their dividend and in financials you have uh Principal Financial Group, Prudential Financial, Regions Financial. Uh, the first two were insurance companies. Then you have uh, Unum Group, which is another insurance company. And then in healthcare, you got five. You got Pfizer, CVS, AbbVie, Bristol Myers, and Cardinal Health. So all great uh, businesses. Industrials, you have Emerson Electric, Cummins snap on 3m ups can't say anything bad about these companies uh, information technology now here's where it gets a little iffy in my opinion um seagate technology they're kind of old school uh technology hardware storage um xerox <laughs> i mean <laughs> does anybody use xerox anymore um Broadcom, that's a good strong name. NetApp is kind of old and so is IBM, but IBM is trying to turn it around with their Red Hat acquisition. So, you know, information technology is probably their actually weakest uh, sector here, but they're all established companies with high cash flow yields. Materials, you have international paper, uh, Dow and Eastman Chemical, which is which are nice companies. Uh, real estate, uh, Regency Centers, Well Tower and Ventos, and Simon Property Group. That's interesting. Uh, utilities, uh, Weck Energy, Semper Energy, Dominion Energy. So. Like I said, uh, there's nothing bad about any of these companies in here. They're not 
um, you know, I don't think they're reaching to get their yield here. So we look at the dividends. We're looking at a 5% dividend yield paid monthly. And this fund has only been around since 2017. So there's not going to be much growth. It has a one-year growth showing at 27.59%. Um, one thing I wanted to show, and I always forget about this, is the turnover ratio for this. I'm going to suspect it's going to be quite high um, because anytime, uh, especially with this transition in, in the market that we've kind of had in this past year, um, a lot of people would, a lot of companies would probably drop out of a fund like this because cash flow yields have dropped. And so if we go to key stats and we'll look at their turnover ratio, we'll probably see that it's kind of high and it is 42% uh, annual turnover ratio. So turnover ratio is how many times they sell off a, uh, a company that doesn't meet its criteria anymore and and replace it with a company that does meet its criteria so annually they look at the portfolio see who is no longer qualified sell off sell off th those companies that don't meet the criteria and then they buy the companies that meet the criteria they do that probably twice a year so they've had to do that 42 percent of their portfolio so uh, there's 55 companies, so 42%. What are you looking at? Uh, 20 some companies have been replaced within the last year. And so uh, we will look at its performance um, since March 23rd of this year. The reason why I'm doing that is because I want to see what funds uh, have responded well since March 23rd which is our our you know stock market low of this year and one etf that i would compare this to that's very popular is sphd now everybody goes into sphd because it's a monthly pair um that's pretty much pretty much it's uh it's shine i guess you'd call it um but they got hit pretty hard and I, it'd be cool to see if from March 23rd, if SPDV has performed better than SPHD. So we'll just chart that from March 23rd till today and we'll chart $10,000 and we'll look here and it looks like SPDV had a total return of 44.69% since March 23rd versus SPHD's 35.69%. So if you annualize that out, uh, SPDV had a 108.76% gain and SPHD 86.85%. So that is what I got for you today. SPDV, why isn't it getting any love? I don't know because um, everything I'm looking at in it, except for the tech sector which is kind of weak um i like it equal weighted across all 11 sectors um, so your risk is is spread out um, nice dividend should actually have some dividend growth out of these companies uh good value uh good value stocks in here i really like that and maybe it's time for value stocks to shine who knows anyway you guys take a look at this SPDV and let me know what you think. Um, also, if you made it this far, thank you very much. If you appreciate what I do, down in the description below, there is an Amazon link. If you use that Amazon link and, and complete your shopping experience through that link, you don't have to buy what's linked to that uh, in that link. You can buy whatever you'd like as long as you use that link. I get a small commission unqualified purchases so if you would do that they send me about you know a couple percent of whatever it is that you purchase in cash and and that'd be a great way to say thank you and um, 
I would appreciate it very much. So if you're new, like, share, subscribe. If you're not new, give me a thumbs up, comment down below and do all that good stuff. Hope you guys enjoy your weekend. You guys have a great one. We'll talk to you later. Thanks. Bye-bye. I am not a financial advisor. The information contained in this video is for entertainment and informational purposes only. It is not intended to be investment advice. Please seek a licensed professional for any investment, tax, or legal advice. Thank you.